Oh boy, fasten your seatbelts because this is an opinionated episode of Inside 300 and we ain't happy. Welcome into episode 86. I'm your host, Brian Perry. Disney did some questionable stuff this week and we're here to talk about it. The countdown's already begun, so let's go. All right, so we're going to start with the video that Disney released the other day showcasing the progress on the Tron coaster coming to the Magic Kingdom. Now, in the video, a member of Walt Disney Imagineering states that the team is excited because they are ending Phase 1 of ride testing and entering Phase 2. Oh my god. We are excited because we are entering Phase 2 of ride testing? It is 2022. This ride broke ground over four years ago. Here's a history lesson for you. The Magic Kingdom was constructed in 18 months back in the 70s. The 19th set, we didn't even have computers back then. And Tron has taken four years and we still don't even have an opening day. Unbelievable. You want to blame the COVID-19 pandemic? Go right ahead, please. Well, I've got a response for you. I have compiled a list of things that have happened since Disney unnecessarily announced Tron in the summer of 2017. With that, enjoy. So I think it's only fitting that it will be soon home to be Shanghai's highest rated attraction. That's right, Tron is coming to Washington. A list of things that have happened since Tron was announced for the Magic Kingdom. Spider-Man Homecoming came out. Spider-Man Far From Home came out. Spider-Man No Way Home came out. Universal Guest Road Dragon Challenge for the last time. Universal announced Hagrid's Motorbike Adventure. Universal Builds Hagrid's Motorbike Adventure. Universal Opens Hagrid's Motorbike Adventure. Tom Brady lost a Super Bowl. Tom Brady won a Super Bowl. Tom Brady won a Super Bowl, this time in Tampa. Yodeling Kid, Yodels in Walmart. Notre Dame catches on fire. People try to storm Area 51. Black Panther's great. Last Jedi stinks. Disney replaces the redhead with a redhead with a gun. Titan Tiger King, the Ratatouille musical, a royal baby was born, Disney Plus debuts, Mama Coco, Forky, and Bruno all appear on the screen for the first time, Disney princesses meet Vanellope and Merida, Bob Iger steps down as CEO and everything goes to shit. the coronavirus takes over the world, a new president is sworn in, Disney closes its gates, Disney reopens its gates four months later, Universal builds Velocicoaster, Universal announces Velocicoaster, Universal opens Velocicoaster, in that order, COVID vaccines are approved by the FDA, FastPass dies. Minnie wears a pantsuit, and finally, Tron enters phase two of ride testing. See, this is Disney's problem. They didn't have to announce Tron back when the pyramids were built in Giza. At least that's what it feels like. Universal, on the other hand, just builds things. Then a few months before it opens, says, by the way, this is what this is. And then people love it. They're excited. Disney announced Tron in Cosmic Rewind back nearly half a decade ago, and we don't have anything for either one. So how about we cosmic rewind it back into the past and don't even announce it in the first place? There's an idea. Disney announces these attractions so far in advance. They create these expectations that are through the roof and quite honestly, impossible to match. Tron is an awesome ride. It's in Shanghai already and it's great, but it's kind of short. Just don't announce them so early. That's all I ask. On to the Festival of Fantasy, which is back at Magic Kingdom, kinda. Most of the parade made its highly anticipated return this past Wednesday, when for the first time in nearly two years, the soundtrack's initial trumpets blasted over the Magic Kingdom speaker system. Now, I say most of the parade because noticeable absences included a number of movers, dancers, and units as a whole. To start off, the Swan Court who usually opens up the parade in front of Beast and Belle, were nowhere to be seen. Speaking of Beast, he also didn't make the trip, nor did Anna from Frozen or Naveen from Princess and the Frog. Prince Charming said, I'll pass, and that's just the first float. It's hard to accept that this was due to the safety of the performers in regards to close contact, because next door at Mickey's Magical Friendship Fair, which recently debuted, performers were hand in hand dancing the day away on the castle stage. Perhaps most noticeable was the fact that Merida and her Highland dancers, plus her tremendous float, were not included in the return of FOF. Merida is appearing in the Disney Adventure Friends cavalcade, so if Disney wants to say that's why she can't appear in FOF, fine, I guess. Though the Highland dancers were one of the best choreographed units in any parade Disney has put out, 
So really, they're getting the short end of the stick here. I guess the Merida float will just collect dust behind Splash Mountain because it's hard to see how this could be repurposed. Overall, the best news is that the parade is back. Kinda. I was hoping that all the missing pieces will be back sooner rather than later. That's going to do it for this episode of Inside 300. If you like what you saw, be sure to subscribe. Click that bell. Hello, bell icon. This way you're notified every time we come out with brand new content. I've been your host, Brian Perry. I will see you next time. And as always, bye-bye.